Hello and welcome to The Nourish Life. I am sitting here at the dining room table. I've just gotten back from a swim with the sun-kissed cheeks and the salty hair, but um, I did a bit of a reflection yesterday along with some vision-driven questions for 2022 and I gained a lot from this. So I went along and created a workbook which forms the basis of today's podcast. So I would love to chat today about my learnings from this little activity that I've done um, and my experience. And if you would like to delve into this process as well, then you can grab a free copy in the show notes or from my bio in my Instagram on my Instagram. So let's just dive straight in. So the first question I looked at was, how would you sum up this year? What have you really loved about it? What have you not liked? What amazing people have come into your life? And what cool things have you experienced? Um, Just get it all out, write it all down. So some of the things that I loved in 2021 was finalizing my book. It is not yet printed, but it's goddamn close. Um, I've pretty much uh, handed it over for the final proofread um, and it will be printed by the end of January. So I can pretty much say it's finished now. Uh, finally, deciding a solid direction for Strength City. So we've taken uh, Strength City from a group training uh, facility to a semi-private strength training facility. And it just feels so goddamn good. This is how Reese and I have been training for the last year and a bit. Um, and we've finally made the decision to yeah, make the change and have a semi-private structure at Strength City. And yeah, like I said, it feels really, really good to be lifting alongside people and getting people really freaking strong. Um, Impacting lots of women through my nutrition coaching. I've seen a lot of um, mindset shifts, barriers break down, um, like limiting beliefs, um, weight loss, like so much goodness has come from um, a lot of the women that I've coached this year. Another great thing that I've loved is how strong I have I have gotten. Um, last August, um, I really hurt my back. I was literally putting my child on the lounge, um, and just something went, and I was I couldn't walk for a few days. Um, I was looking at surgeons, and I threw myself. Well, after a bit of rehab guidance and um, the support of a coach, uh, my husband, I started um, full blown into strength training. Um, I've been consistent this year in that I've pretty much done four days a week, every day, every week this year. Um, and so I'm amazed at how strong I ha- I am. At 33 years of age, um, I'm the strongest I have ever been, which is really, really cool. Um, collaborating with companies. So there's, um, a few companies like DK active and Perifit that I have, um, partnered with this year, which has been really cool. And another thing that I've loved was having my mum up here for the majority of the year. Um, I got to spend a lot of time with her and she got to spend a lot of time with my babies. Things that I not necessarily loved. There's not a lot. Um, how long it has taken me to write the book (laughs) or the process of writing a book has been somewhat frustrating, but it's not that I didn't love it. Um, maybe not having Reese here every night, um, you know, with dinner, owning a facility, owning a, a, a gym, there's split shifts. So he's away most nights, but the great thing is, is that he's here most of the day with us and the kids. Um, so there weren't a lot of things that I didn't love about 2021. Some of the people Um, The amazing people that came into my life this year was Cindy O'Meara, who wrote the forward for my soon-to-be-released book, Living Awake. So many new faces at Strength City, welcoming so many new members. I met so many strong women at the two powerlifting comps that I competed in this year. Um, But... On the top of, yeah, from the top of my head, that they would be the top kind of people that I've immersed myself with this year. And then cool things, again, right, the whole process of writing a book is just, is really cool to now zoom out and go, holy shit, like it was a mammoth process. Um, but that was, that was really cool to, to now be in the, the end or final stages of that. And being about, um, you know, loving what I do every day, like loving what I do every day and spending time with the kids, like it. 2021 was just um, was just perfect like that being doing what I love and and having the time and flexibility to do that with the kids so moving on to the next question how have you felt this year overall so I could say that sometimes I was overwhelmed and maybe not present for those of you who are watching or listening who are business owners entrepreneurs 
and mums, it can be a really um, funny situation. You, you're wearing a lot of different hats. Um, it can, can be easy to, to get swept up in the to-do list um, and the pressures of running a business as well as wanting to be fit and healthy yourself um, and being a present um, and fun mum. So there were times where I was overwhelmed and, uh, and not present. But by the end of the year, more clarity and more alignment. I really felt and am feeling now an immense amount of gratitude um, and clarity and alignment. So moving on to the next question, what amazing things did you achieve this year? So big or small, write them all out. So for me, some of the amazing things that I've done this year was um, my precision nutrition certification. So this is um, my nutrition coaching certification, which is a habit-based form of nutrition coaching, which I really, really resonate. Gone are the days of the quick fixes, the 30-day challenges, the things like that. We are our habits. Um, so I'm really um, happy to now be yeah, PN certified. Moving on to um, my strength, getting a 117 and a half kilo squat, a 137 and a half kilo deadlift and a 57 and a half kilo bench, all the halves. <laughs> Hopefully next year I can make them neat numbers. Um, not that that matters, but yeah, pretty um, stoked with those weights that I've achieved this year. Launching my nutrition and lifestyle coaching. Um, that was really amazing. Um, technically, you know, finishing my book. I started ocean swimming as well. This really put me out of my comfort zone, doing something new, um, but so nourishing for my soul at the same time. I started a podcast, which you're listening to right now. And yeah, moving from that group training to a semi-private um, training facility was, um, was pretty amazing. Next question, what did I do in order to achieve those amazing things? I, I basically put it down to four things. So consistency. Consistency is key in anything you do. Consistency is what builds habits and what creates new ones. Um, so I consistently studied for my PN certification. I consistently wrote and done what I needed to do in order to push my book forward. I consistently turned up to my training sessions um, in order to get those, those weights. I consistently swum every weekend um, and put myself in that position of being in the ocean and pushing myself out of the comfort zone. Um, and then I believed in myself, like, you know, doing these, these things, you've got to have some sort of self-belief going on. Um, so I believed that I could do these things. And when you do these things and you then build on that belief even more, like, holy shit, I did this. Well, what else am I capable of doing? What could I do next? What else can I do to push me out of my comfort zone? What else can I do to take me to that next level? Knowing my values as well, I really feel like I am living my life um, based on my values and I feel really aligned most of the time and in flow. Um, all of those amazing things that I achieved these years feel really good down to my core. Um, so knowing my values, I think, plays a really big part. Um, and I talk all about that in my book as well. And the last thing, the fourth thing, is doing what felt really good to me. So I can't really think of anything I've done this year that didn't feel good apart from, you know, deciding to move from group training to a semi-private facility. Not that that didn't feel good. Um, but everything that I have done this year has just felt, yeah, really, really great. So consistency, belief in myself, knowing my values and just doing what really feels good to me, um, as opposed to doing what I think I should do or what others are doing. So next question, what did you want to achieve but didn't? So I really wanted my book printed this year. Um, I started writing um, in COVID lockdown um, in 2020 and it has been a really big process. Um, but that takes me to the next question. Why didn't you achieve them? What external challenges arose or how did you hold yourself back? So I held myself back a little bit trying to be perfect. I literally cut out seven chapters of my book because it was a bit of an opportunity to change course. Um, on the final stage of my book, my book is split up into four stages. Um, and instead of the last stage being thrive, it is now impact. So I talk a lot about the environment, sustainability, leading a low tox life, simplifying your life. Um, so even though I was trying to be perfect and wanting the book to be perfect, um, I find, I found that in doing that, I've produced a better book in the long run. Um, but also external challenges is just, um, that's sometimes what happens when you have a publisher. Um, you know, the back and forth, um, making it the best possible product at the end. Um, so I know that it's all going to be worth it in the end. 
Then moving on to the next question, thinking about the ways you've been holding yourself back, beliefs you have that haven't been serving you, doubts and fears that have been propping up. So for me, um, not giving myself enough credit. Um, I remember Ocean, my publisher at the start was like, you know, after you finish writing a chapter, celebrate it. Um, you know, because you're about to be an author, you are writing a book. No one, like there's not a lot of people that, that actually go on to publish books. Um, so yeah, not giving myself enough credit for that, um, is something that's, um, a belief, I guess that, that wasn't serving me. Um, thinking I'm not as good as others, falling into that comparison trap a little bit, talking to a lot of the women, um, over the year in my nutrition, um, and lifestyle coaching, I think it is something that we, you know, dwell on a little bit is, is putting others on a pedestal um, and, you know, comparing our lives to the highlight reels of Instagram. So um, that's something that I definitely still um, struggle with at times. Um, so, yeah, there's some of the things that um, held me back, beliefs, um, doubts, fears, things like that. All right, now moving on to the next question. What beliefs do you want to let go of as we move into 2022? So I, this is, this is me being a little bit vulnerable and I guess it ties into what I just spoke about with um, putting people up on a pedestal, looking at the highlight reel of Instagram. Um, but it's that in order to look, um, in, in order to be successful um, and have an impact, that I have to look the part. So if you're watching the video of this now, I'm not wearing any makeup, my hair's a salty mess, I'm in a baggy t-shirt, um, you know, I don't have, I don't bleach my hair, I don't have fake eyelashes, I'm just really natural and I swear a lot and I do things differently and that might not resonate with a lot of people and sometimes I get caught up in if I looked the part, if I you know, maybe went and got my hair done or my nails done or, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, I guess it feeds into that uh, potentially like not enoughness. So breaking that down and I, I want to release my grip on that, um, that in order to be successful and make an impact, I need to look the part. So yeah, that's definitely something that I need to work on uh, this year. So that wraps up the reflection side of... Um, 2021. Now let's move into the vision of 2022. This is the exciting part. Um, so the question is, what would you like 2022 to look and feel like? For me, my word for 2022 is growth. So I would like to experience growth, growth out of my comfort zone, um, promoting my book. I know that there's going to be times where I'm, I'm going to be, um, you know, a bit shy, a bit challenged, uh, things like that. Uh, growth as a business owner in a business that truly aligns through impacting more members um, and obviously financial growth that comes along with that. Uh, growth as a coach as I'm helping more women to get stronger and break down the mindset barriers when it comes to nutrition. Growth as an athlete by proving what I'm capable of um, at both um, nationals that I'm competing in um, and any other competition that I do next year and even just generally in the gym just proving to myself um, during every session. Growth in the belief I have within myself that I am intelligent and I am capable of anything. Growth as a parent by being present and mindful and acknowledging that they are my absolute number one priority. Growth in my spirituality through deepening my meditation uh, practices and scheduling consistent yoga practices. And then lastly, growth in my relationships through deeper connections, vulnerability and communication. So... I brought up a lot of different areas in my life, but they all encompass that growth aspect. So moving on to the next question, what would your best year ever be like? What would you achieve? So I, I got rid of any, any thoughts about what couldn't be done, any limiting beliefs and what would my absolute best year ever, not just next year, but ever. And this is what I come up with. So my absolute best year ever would be having knowledgeable and fun staff members, um, taking sessions with our crew so that Reese and I can impact more members' lives, put out valuable content, we can lift with our members, we can um, construct and complete amazing programs for them and spend 
quality time with our kids. So basically build our empire by impacting more lives. Waking up and not needing both of us at the gym at the same time. So I guess this kind of ties back to the last one, um, which would allow me to do a morning walk or swim in the ocean. Like that would be the absolute best way to start the day. Um, today is the last day of daycare for my children. And I don't normally do something as lavish as I done this morning, but today I got on my push bike and I rode to the ocean baths and I cut some laps and I rode home and I just had this immense feeling of gratitude just wash over me to be in the position to be able to do something like that. So for me to start every day or even every second day or a couple of days a week, it would just totally fill my cup. Um, moving on, having a pool and a landscape front yard um, possibly renovate a kitchen and bathroom, but the pool to make memories in with the kids. Um, we're lucky enough to have uh, my mother-in-law have a pool and we're literally there every day. Like we are all water babies. The kids absolutely love it. Letty, um, is two and she can almost swim by herself. It's amazing. And they just have so much fun. So to be able to drop a pool in the front yard would just be incredible. I have made a pretty epic goal. Um, I don't know if it's naive because I haven't been there, done that yet, but I have ordered 1,500 books in my first print and I would love to sell them within the first four months and have a second print run of 1,500 uh, to be sold by the end of the year. So I want to sell 3,000 books in 2022. Um, so yeah, that gives me a bit of butterflies in the stomach. Um, but yeah, that is my goal. I would love to continue coaching women online um, for nutrition and lifestyle, whether that be one-on-one -on -one or group. I haven't really decided yet um, because I don't know how chaotic next year is going to be with the release of my book, but I know that I want to have some sort of um, platform there for women that I can continue to help. Uh, going on weekend getaways with the kids and having at least three weeks off next year. <laughs> I say that with hesitation, but um it's not as if we don't want to go away or can't. It's about the fact that we, we bloody love what we do and where we live. And if today is anything to go by, today is a Thursday, um, and I have gone on an ocean swim, rode my bike, um, recording this podcast. Like, you know, it's, it's yeah, it, it's we've created something really magical. So if we can, um, you know, take it to the next level and go on weekend getaways, then that would be pretty cool as well. Um, what's next? So surround myself with more women who are where I want to be. So, you know, hearing that saying you are, um, the top five people that you hang around, um, immersing myself in that feminine energy and surrounding myself with more women, I think would be really cool for 2022. Uh, I, no, I'm not going to say that. That's a bit of a surprise. I'm going to leave that one. <laughs> I nearly went with that. I've pretty much shared every single thing that I've written down, but I'm not going to share that one. Uh, lastly, be emotionally and physical, uh, physically available for my baby boy Koa, who is going to big school next year. So I want to be able to um, have that space for him um, as he transitions from daycare to prep next year. Next question. So how much time do I want to take off in 2022 and when? So I pretty much said uh, uh, just before three weeks, um, I would love to go down to Newcastle more and catch up with my family. My entire family is down in Newcastle. We postponed our Hamilton Island holiday in 2020 because of COVID. We have not yet taken it yet. Um, but I'd love to do, yeah, getaways to uh, Newcastle, Victoria to see my partner's family. Um, I want to go glamping in Agnes. I want to go to Fraser Island. I want to so badly go to a tiny house in the woods somewhere. <laughs> I don't know why. It just really, really appeals to me. All right, moving on. What courses and books would li I like to immerse in in 2022? I haven't actually written any courses. Um, I think at the moment I'm really coursed out. I think that I, because I'm creating so much in my business, um, I'm just really, I'm, I've always been about books. So some of the books, um, I can look at my present sitting under the Christmas tree at the moment. I've got a five stack journal from Insight Mind um, that I, I can't wait to delve into. Uh, the One Invisible Code, Low Tox Life Food, uh, Lab to Table, Essentialism, A Year of Living Consciously, Conscious Living. Um, I do have the authors to all those. I just haven't written them down. Uh, but they're some of the books that I would love to read. So what could help support you in building your dream life? So for me, I've um, broken it down into five things. So creating space for checking in with my goals, 
actually setting goals and being consistent with that. Visualization, meditation, and self-care. I think creating space in your day um, to check in with those things. And yeah, sitting in that visualization of, of where you want to be, who you want to be is really, really important um, to bring that dream life to, to fruition. Being intentional when I am at work, like what exactly needs to happen and having a master to-do list. Um, organizing my schedule. So if you were to have a look at my Google calendar, it is, it's fairly organized. Like I do block everything. Um, reinforce to myself that I can have it all and it can be easy. I think a, a limiting belief that floats around is um, to get where you want to get, you know, you have to put in the hard work, but I, I think that it doesn't have to be um, like that. And then for me, consistency in revenue producing activities. So I can easily float and do things that don't really matter <laughs> or will not necessarily move the needle. So just having that in the back of my mind. All right, moving on. What do you, uh, who do you want to be in 2022? So this might sound um, a bit <laughs> far-fetched, but I want to be the woman who, who got it all in 2022. We've had some rough years, especially with the business, um, you know, a few lockdowns. Um, I want to be the girl who got exposure from the book and made a really big impact to a lot of women's lives. I want to be the girl or the woman who, um, who got a pool in the front yard for her kids to create memories. I want to be the woman who provided people with the opportunity to coach at my facility. I want to be the woman who impacted more lives at Strength City. I want the holidays. I just, I want this one big year of growth. That's who I want to be. I want to be this woman who had an epic amount of growth. Next question. How do you want to feel in 2022? I want to feel successful. And like everything I have done up until this point has paid off and I am content with myself and what I've created. Now, this moves into the next question. What can you do to welcome these feelings in? I wrote down, start acting like I am successful. But in reality, I do feel that I am. So it's a bit of a funny question. Like, how do I want to feel? I want to feel successful. But then when I reflect on my life, the fact that I am doing exactly what I want to do, the fact that I get to spend so much time with my children, like that is success in itself to me. So if I can, can ride that wave of success, um, then 2022 is going to be pretty epic. All right. I didn't realize this conversation was going to go for so long, but we're at the final question. So imagine your 90 year old self as you set off for 2022, what advice would she give you? What would she tell you when it comes to going after your dreams and living your best life? So I made one, pretty much one life, uh, one line. I said one life. Create the best fucking life you can possibly imagine. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. So I hope you liked today's uh, podcast. I was a bit open and vulnerable in a few things. Let me know how you went. Uh, hit me up on the gram if you want to grab yourself a copy of the workbook that has all these questions in it. Um, then it's in the show notes. You can jump onto my Instagram um, bio and download it there as well. But this is me checking off for 2021. I will see you all again in 2022.